Hey everyone, so it is time for this week's Windsor real estate market update. Hot off the press. You'll notice that there's something different here too. Let me figure out how to turn on a light here. There we go. I've added a different column to my printout. And what I've added is this column, which is con con contributing broker, try to say that 10 times fast on a Saturday morning, contributed broker share. Um, so the, the percentage that the seller was paying the competing realtor to sell their house, you'll notice that there was just one, 3%, just one. Everything else is two and a half, two and a quarter, two. And I have a little bit of data set on all of that for you to be able to share, which is kind of proprietary only to Brian, but we're gonna share it on this video. So for the week, we sold 81 properties. Now we're building some good inventory. That's a plus and a minus because the seller demands a set price they have in their head what they feel their property is worth. On Dougal, I have a buyer for a property on Dougal, on Busy Road Dougal, zoom, zoom, zoom. He loved the house, but the seller believes it to be worth $530,000. And my buyer believes it to be worth $510,000. We're off by $20,000. And the deal probably will not come together. Unfortunately, we'll see, but we have now 756 units of inventory. That is up from 530 at the beginning of the year. We are building inventory, which means the pricing points will start coming down. If somebody is desperately interested in selling their house. If you're really interested in moving to Georgia, well, the boat is sailing pretty darn quickly here from the concepts of valuation of your house because we're building inventory. That means that there's not as many people buying because interest rates are starting to have that impact on what's going on. So... Here's what's going on as far as this market. Sorry, I just got a text from uh, the a transaction I'm working on. I have another thing I need to do today, put it in my schedule. Uh, but you'll also notice data sets from this week. We only listed, or we only, yeah, we only listed $37 million worth of houses and sold them $37 million worth of houses down substantially from about $20 million. Things are slowing down a little bit. We still sold 81 houses. It's just the houses that we sold were less expensive houses. Pricing points are coming down a little bit. Not a lot by any stretch of the imagination. But if you take two or three or $4,000 of differences in pricing points on a house times 81 houses, it starts adding up to become a lot. And that's why you're seeing these data sets filter through. So we sold 37 million, or we listed $37 million for the houses of that 37 million. We created 43 million because they sold for 43,285. There were only 14 houses under bid, only 14 under bid of the 81. Everything else was over. Right, so still a lot of demand for houses even though we have some inventory building up because sellers have to be willing to sell. Now, of the $43 million worth of inventory that we sold, um, the difference between these two is 5.4. So we created an extra 5.4 over. So the market values, we settled out at market values. The market value of the houses that sold was $43 million. 
average list price. If we take this number divided by 81, average list price was $467,000. So let's come down a little bit. That tells us that we're listing some less expensive houses. So those folks that have smaller budgets have a better chance of finding a house right now. So if you have 350,000 or 300,000, I really need 350,000 or 300,000 to try to find you a house. If you have that money, you should be in the market right now because we have some listings for you to be able to go out and buy. But hurry, because they'll go fast. It's what happens all of the time with it. It's just we have a little bit of inventory right now for it. Not a lot, under the 350s. So 467 is our average selling price. That's down from about 567, which tells you that we're selling more inexpensive houses than we're selling multi-billion dollar houses. It's all that that data means. It's all it means. It doesn't mean anything different. Here this week, we only sold three $1 million houses. And you know then we went into the 700s. That brought this number down. It's all it means. Average sale price, $534,000. That's down again as well, too. So average selling price, $534,000. What that means is that if you're trying to find the average house in the city of Windsor, you need $534,000. If you're trying to find the most stupendous, most beautifulest, most hgtv house in the city of Windsor, you're going to need more than this. Because it's not the average house in the city of Windsor, by all means. And I have a buyer that's wrestling with that too. I showed him a beautiful house over by the hospital in a stunning neighborhood where he can go for evening walks and hold hands and do all of that stuff and feel safe and, and, and just be wonderful. The house was stunningly beautiful. It will probably be within his $500,000 budget because it has a few little issues. You can't park on the road because it's right there at the hospital. It says no parking all over the place. Okay, great. How do I have people over for dinner? Well, they park over on the other road and they just walk over to your house. They park a block away. Oh, can't do that. What's wrong with walking? Everybody has legs. It's not like it's a bad neighborhood or nothing. They don't think that way. They think, oh, gee, I can't have anybody over to my house ever because there's no parking. Can't buy this house. There's parking right over there. It's right over that way. One block over, one road over. They just park over there, walk over. If there's no space in your driveway, they walk over. If you're going to have six or seven people in with six or seven cars, yeah, they have to park someplace else and make a little walk. Oh, <gasps> how dare I do that? Nobody will ever come over to my house if they have to park a block away and walk to my house, Brian. Don't understand it, but it's real in real estate. All of that. Every buyer is always looking for a reason not to buy a house. They all are. It happens all the time. So beautiful house over by the hospital. Stunningly beautiful. Go inside of it. Stunningly beautiful. Brian, this house doesn't have a garage. Can't buy it. I'm like, okay, we can buy it for four seventy five dollars because it'll be under your budget. It's a beautifully stunning house that's been all done. And we can spend $20,000 to do a garage. Oh, how dare you? Can't do that. Got to find some reason not to buy this house, Brian. Yes, it's stunningly beautiful. Yes, I could just move right in and have this wonderful bachelor pad. But has to be some reason not to buy this house, Brian. And how dare you show me a house that doesn't have a garage? Because a garage is more important than having a really super, super, super nice house. It happens all the time. I don't get it because I start to learn, okay, I need a garage. I need a main floor bedroom and I need a garage. Those are the two things so far that I need. And I need it to be an HGTV house under $500,000. Good luck. It's never going to happen. And I know that. But he hasn't learned that yet. He still believes it will happen. So every buyer is like that, though. We all are. We all. That's why when I built my new house, it's like, yeah, I want to do a few little upgrades to it, but I want to stay on budget. And I was very good at staying on budget just because of my personality and all that stuff. 
So average selling price, 534. This particular buyer's budget, no more than 510, so he's under the average selling price. Just under. But his tastes are above the average selling price. And that's what he's wrestling with right now. And then the seller's expectation has to be within his budget. Gee, I don't want to sell the house for less than $510,000. I'm not going to do it. So that's why the whole real estate thing becomes very emotional because you have to find the right house with the right seller that the, the deal can come together. And then you have to be able to get convey the deal and get the deal together without competing against somebody else who has more money. It's part of the whole process. Now, looking at this data, why did I run this data? Oh, average, average overbid. Sorry, we haven't gone there yet. Let me finish this. Average overbid was $67,000 still. So there's still tons of activity out there buying houses in the city of Windsor. It's just we had less expensive houses come up. And $67,000 was the average overbid. Now, why am I doing this column? Now, well, I'm trying to show my sellers how important giving a 2.5% commission is on being able to get as much of this overbid as possible. The statistical overbid. How do we get as much of this as possible? It comes down to commission. And you see that right here. Ta-da! A new column. A little bit of new data. So this was fun. Now, my, my, my lists are a little wrong here. Let me grab a marker. This is 2.5. You can't really tell, so I'm going to write it here, 2.5. This is 2.25. Now, so what you see here is that there were 42 of the 81. There were 42 houses that were listed with a competing realtor's percentage at 2%. So over 50% of the market is choosing this 2%. Now, I don't know if the listing realtor is getting 3% and keeping all of that for them, saying, you know, hey, I got the listing, I'm going to pay myself more. I don't know any of that. I don't know the contractual thing. But what I do know is that 42 of the buy, of the sellers chose 2.0. That's all I know. And that 33 of the sellers chose 2.5. That's all I know. And that 5 of the sellers chose 2.25. Now, you would expect to see that if this is too low, the house will not perform as good as 67,000 over. And you should see that this number being higher and then this number these two should do really well and come very close to being the 67,000 over. And that this number, 2.25, should be somewhere in between. Huh? That's exactly how it plays out. So a seller who chooses to list the competing broker at 2.0 only has a 66.9% chance of getting all of this number. Over. When they discount down the commission, they don't get the benefit. They give that up. Now, 66.9% of the 67, let's do that. 67 by... Um, 66% is 44. Okay. They are getting 44,000 ostensibly when you break out the math and you think about the math. They're, they're, they're getting about 44,000 over. Right? But they're not getting 67 over. They're leaving 13,000 on the table because they won't pay the extra 0.5% of, say, a $500,000 listing. 
Now, does that make any sense at all? No, it doesn't because 500,000 by 0.5 percent is only 2,500. If you stop this listing at 2%, make this 2.5, then it's only costing you $2,500 to add the 0.5. But you're going to get, you're going to leave, if you don't do it, you're going to leave 13000 on the table mathematically. Why wouldn't you put the 2500 in to net 11000 It makes more sense to do a 2.5 doesn't make any sense at all to use 2.0 because you're going to underperform. The math is the math. It's here. Once you run it and, and look at it, the math is the math. So at the end of the day, 42, because everybody who sits there and says, oh, I don't want to pay you to sell my house. And what realtors should be saying is we should be saying, okay, so your house is going to underperform. It's okay. We understand. You don't want to make all that money off your house because you'd feel so embarrassed about it. We get it. And so, sure, we'll go ahead and list your house at 2%, but just understand that your house is going to underperform by $13,000. Mathematically. Hmm. I don't want it to do that. I want it to overperform. Okay, if you want it to overperform or have at least the highest propensity chance of overperforming, then what we need to do is we need to list it at the standard 2.5. Because the standard, there were 33 of them that were the standard 2.5, and they got 90.7% of the average overbid $67,000. They got 90.7% chance of getting to the $67,000 overbid average for all of the houses selling. Now, what did we see here? Okay, maybe I want some kind of a special discount or I want, you know, I want to I want to trim costs in any way that I possibly can. I need as much money for the next house as I possibly can, Brian. So let's go ahead and use 2.25 because it's a good even ground. Okay, we can do that too. We can do anything you want us to do. And so there were five houses that chose that number and they got 85.8% of the statistical overbid. So they did really well. You only gave up point four point. Well, let's round it up. You gave up five percent chance of being overbid, of being sixty-seven overbid. So it does make some sense to use two point two five as well too. You're going to get traffic through your house. You're going to get offers through your house, and your house is going to have a higher propensity of overperforming compared to choosing two point zero. Which would you like to do, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller? You choose that. Nobody else chooses that. But all the other realtors, they come in and they say, yeah, I'm going to take 3% for me and I'm going to give 2% to the other. And they don't explain it. They don't explain that, hey, your house is going to underperform on this recommendation. And they should be explaining it. But professional realtors explain it or just explained it. When you're listing your house, please call me. We'll get it sold. And I'm going to cut my commission on the sell side down to 2%, giving you a price break there so that you can do this 2.5. I want you to be 2.5 because I want you having the highest propensity of overperforming with your house. It's your house, not my house. I want you to overperform. That's why I'm a financial advisor. I look at this math all the time. That's why I'm different. I look at the map. So there was one house listed at 3.0% competing broker commission. How did it perform? It got 100% over the 67,000. So it, it got 115% with just one offer even too. One offer on it. That was the funniest thing. One offer on it. It was on Elrose, Riverside. One offer on it. A really nice house, too. I toured it. My client just felt it was a little bit too dated for him. On a double lot in the city. But it was Elrose. You have to 
pluses and minuses with Elrose, pluses and minuses with houses in the city of Windsor. But it was still Riverside, one block off the water. And that house overperformed. It got 115%. And it got 100% of the over. So mathematically, gee, if I want to get $67,000 over, if I want to hit this target and be the number one, then what do I need to do to be able to do that? I need the list with 3%. Now, wouldn't it seem logical if we were 2.75% that we would outperform the twos, we would outperform the 2.5s, we would outperform the 2.25s, and we should probably underperform the 3.0 from trying to get 100% of our 67,000 over. So what I do for my clients, and what I try to explain to all of my sellers, is they choose the, the commission that I will be happy to work for 2.0 because I stand to benefit by the listing. And by me taking this down by 0.5, what I want them to do is I want them to bump this up to 2.75 from 2.5 because they should be paying that mathematically. And that way they do better on the sale of their house. They net more on the sale of their house and I found ways to be profitable in doing this for me. One, I've been married for 27 years. I'm not divorced. Two, I drive normal cars. Three, I don't buy Prada bags and, and Gucci watches and all that stuff. It's not in me. It's not what I want to do. I go camping when I go on vacation. Um, and I drive normal cars, like I said, and my house is paid off. I don't have this massive debt hanging over me that I need all the money I could possibly can to get to live my life, live my life normally. And because I'm with real, I'm getting stock options. Every time I sell your house, they're giving me that. And I'm taking a percentage of this anyway, and I'm buying more real shares. And real shares are already up 60% for the year. So because I am taking care of me with this sum, doing all the right things, I can give you that discount so that you can put that here to be able to get more bids, higher value for your house. That's why you should be calling me, saying, Brian, hey, I'm ready to list, your, list my house. I've got one of those appointments on Monday. Great house, beautiful house coming up on a road here in the city of Windsor. The road is a little limited, but it's a beautiful, stunning house with a massive two-car garage, mechanic's dream garage, stunning house, completely rebuilt, floor to ceiling, just stunningly beautiful. And that's going to be so proud to pound my sign in in front of that house and get it sold. He's moving south. And we're going to be talking about listing his house at 2.75. Now, there's one last thing to share with you about this on this week's update. When I do this, when I list houses at 2.75, I get far more traffic. I did one over by the hospital um, while COVID was just coming in. And the neighbor called me and he said, are you paying any attention to your listing over here? And I said, no, is there something wrong? Is there something I need to know? Should I be zooming over there right away with lights and sirens on? He said, no, no, no. He said, the road is packed. There, I can't get up and down my road. There's all these people standing out in front of your house. There's COVID going on. They shouldn't be this close to each other. I said, yeah, but sir, they're outside. There's not, they're not all piling into the house together, are they? No, no, no. It seems like only one person is going in at a time or one group is going in at a time. Are they wearing their mask? Yes, as a matter of fact, they are. It seems like, yes, they're... Okay, good, sir. That's that's exactly what they're supposed to be doing, sir. Standing outside, you don't need your mask as much because your propensity of getting COVID standing outside is pretty darn slim. It's pretty darn slim. 
But if you go inside the house, then yeah, if you're going inside the house, with, and, and those realtors are also signed forms stating that my client doesn't have COVID. So if we know that we don't have COVID and we're standing outside, then they should be pretty safe, sir. Well, yeah, but, 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 but I'm like, I understand, sir, but we're managing it all exactly the way that it's supposed to be managed. He said, yeah, but my road is so big. I said, yes, sir, I understand, sir. My apologies, sir, for being such a great realtor, doing such great work for the seller over there. I get it. I do. And I'm sorry that I'm so good at that but it'll be sold in three or four days. We're going to get all kinds of offers on it. It'll be sold for a massive number and your value of your house will go up because of all the hard work I'm doing across the street from you. He said, yeah, I hadn't really thought about it that way, that my value is going to go up because you're going to get so much more money out of that house than what I ever dreamt possible. I said, yes, exactly. And my client will be really, really happy too. My, my seller client will be really, really happy too. So I should be, you, you know, yes, I understand that it's a train wreck on your road right now. I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope that the ambulances can still get through because it's over by the hospital. If not, they're going to go down the road and rip off all the mirrors. It is what it is. And people will learn their lesson, but I can't control that. I can simply try to get the best, highest value for my client. And we had chosen 2.75% because I gave them this discount. And did I benefit? Oh, heck yes, I benefited. I had a realtor call me from Amherstburg. Brian called me. Brian. I'm like, hey, Mr. Realtor, how are you? Guy has a team. Been in business a long time. Calls me. Brian. Hey, how are you? Oh, I wanted to call you about your list in there. Okay, great. I'll go see you. What's going on? You got an offer for me? No, gone you. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do what? What am I doing wrong? Are you listening at 2.75? Yeah, my client decided to list it at 2.75. I did not list it at 2.75. My client signed the form to do that, sir. Well, yeah, but don't have a client if I do that yet. Why not? It worked for them. The road is packed. Well, yeah. Can't even get in the damn door. I'm not going to stand in line for forever to do this. Okay, come back tomorrow. The line should be lower. should be shorter. Assuming the house is still available for sale because I might get a bully offer tonight. Well, yeah, but don't do that ever again. Don't do what ever again? The 2.75. Damn it. You do 2.75, then I got to do 2.75. Ah, Mr. Realtor. I get it now. You're concerned that you're going to make less money because I'm doing the right job for my client. Well, yeah. It's not about that. Oh, well, thank you. But I run my business based upon my client. You may run your business at 2.0. I'm giving you a hint here, folks. It's exactly how he runs his business. And his listings underperform. Yet he's been in business forever. Oh, we got to call this particular person. He's so good. He's so wonderful. He's so this. He's so that. Yeah, but he underperforms. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't have time for you to show me how he underperforms. Brian, don't want to hear. I compete with him for listings. The listing I have coming up this week is the grandson of a house that that particular realtor sold at 2.0 and it underperformed. And I was in the running to try to get the listing. So this ends this week's update. It becomes very important, you understand now, it becomes very important to at least do 2.5, if not 2.75. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you paying attention. If you're thinking about selling your house and would like to have some of these conversations about how your house can overperform based upon numbers and math and statistics, then please give me a jingle, 519-995-6145, 519-995-6145. I look forward to helping you, and I look forward 
to making some other realtors upset. Have a great day.